At the entrance of the midnight snack corner, a sign that was as tall as a person stood, taking up one half of the doorway. With Lincoln at the head, a large group of security guards stood outside blocking the other side of the door, arms crossed, looking down at the crowd of diners. Get out of the way! We're going to have dinner! One of the diners at the head of the crowd said. Eat? Lincoln said with an evil smile. Aren't you going to pay first? He pointed at the sign next to the door. People stared at the sign, confused. Evil shop toll booth? What is that supposed to mean? Lincoln laughed smugly. Weren't you all the people who abandoned our store, saying we were an evil shop? And we figured, since we were so evil, we might as well own it. He pointed to the bottom of the sign. There was a big box that had a hole in it for cash. There was a sign attached to the box with a QR code on it. From now on, anyone who wants to eat here has to pay the $10 entry fee. As soon as Lincoln said this, there was an uproar. Ten bucks just to get in? Are you insane? I'm going to report you to City Hall. The staff at Cloud Top, mixed in with the crowd, began laughing to themselves. It looks like the Midnight Snack Corner is destroying itself. Why did we even try to do it when they're doing it so much better? They quickly pretended to be ordinary diners and began to stir up the other diners. We can't pay this. Let this business shut down if they want to charge their customers this way. Yes, we can't foster this evil atmosphere. But when they were secretly celebrating, a middle-aged fat man with a broad waist suddenly kicked an employee's waist, making him stagger forward. What are you doing, looking for death? The cloud top employee got up and glared at the man. But when he saw the man's face, his anger suddenly disappeared and he began to stumble over his words. See? King? The man who had kicked him was about 40 years old and his round face was tanned by the sun because he was at sea all year round. But no one dared to laugh at him. Anyone who has been in Arkland City for any period of time has heard the name Milligan Mull, the Sea King. There was a saying in Arkland City, half of the Arklands Bay belonged to the Sea King. This sentence was not groundless, because Ocean Shores, his fishing company, dominated the fishing industry in Arkland City. The Sea King was once a small fisherman with a poor family, he gradually became a prominent figure in the fishing industry with his own savvy and skill. At the age of 30, Mull founded Ocean Shores Fishery. In the following 10 years, Ocean Shores Fishery expanded rapidly until it became the largest fishing company in Arkland City. That was also how he came by the title of the Sea King. More than two-thirds of the local seafood in Arkland City was supplied by Ocean Shores Fishery. Thereby, Mole was generally viewed as a guest of honor by major seafood restaurants whenever he came to visit them. If you owned a restaurant in Arkland City, you knew of the Sea King, and you hoped he would visit your restaurant. Mole was famous for his generous appetite and often ate at restaurants throughout the city, but he also had a strange habit. He never ate at the same place twice. If the assaulter was no other than the Sea King, what could the Cloud Top employees do? They remained markedly silent. Mole glared at the employee on the ground and spat out a series of thunderous words as quickly as a machine gun. If you don't want to pay the entry fee, then don't pay the entry fee. If I can find a delicious food I like, I'd give a million dollars. If you don't want to eat, you should get out of here. Don't make me upset with all of your noise. It should be mentioned that the Sea King was just as famous for his temper as he was for his fishing business. The employee's face was pale, and he didn't say a thing or move. Anyone else who had the idea to stir up a ruckus had also gone startlingly quiet. In fact, the entire crowd had gone silent. Mole looked around with satisfaction and strutted over to the midnight snack door. But at this time, a young man came trotting up behind him. This man's skin was also quite tanned, and he was covered in wrinkles around his forehead and eyes despite his youthful appearance. Dad, I think they're right. We have the money, sure, but why let these people cheat us out of an extra $10? By the way he called Mole dad, it was clear that the boy was Mole's son. Mole immediately roared. What? Were you looking for a scolding as well? Do you think I could stand to eat anything else after smelling that amazing aroma? If you were not my son, I would throw you into the Arklands Bay right now. Stop talking nonsense and give me $10 for this entrance fee. Facing Mole's tyranny, his son had no choice but to bow his head. He sighed, picked up his mobile phone and scanned the QR code paying $10 for his father and another $10 for himself. Lincoln immediately stepped aside, smiling at the two as they entered the restaurant. The Midnight Snack Corner welcomes you, distinguished guests. Mold didn't say anything. 
He just walked in with his hunger printed all over his face. His son's attitude was much worse. He glared at Lincoln angrily, gritted his teeth and said, Aw, oh, just wait. I'll expose your trickery. With a scoff, he followed his father into the building. Lincoln remained confident and calm, without breaking his smile. He called out into the crowd, Two guests have already entered the store. Is there anyone else who wants to come in? As a friendly reminder, supply of our new menu item is limited. First come, first serve. The employees at Cloud Tops were glaring their eyes out. They really didn't understand. Were they really not afraid that charging extra would discredit their reputation entirely? And in those diners tangled with their own feelings, they heard an earth-shaking voice coming from the second floor of the building. My God! It was the Sea King's voice. Hearing this roar, those employees at Cloudtop once again were imagining all kinds of things and speaking whatever they could to discredit their competitor. Ah, uh, it's only been a few minutes and the Sea King has had some kind of accident. Didn't I say this place was unreliable? The diners all spoke among themselves, quickly waffling between decisions. However, a moment later, people heard the voice of the Sea King ring out again. His voice trembled slightly, as if trying to suppress unbridled joy and excitement. Give me another one. No, ten! 